one after after service. We want everybody to go over and have a dinner. And after the dinner, as soon as we can get done, we want to usher back into the church and we'll have our annual business meeting. Everyone here is invited. Only those that are members can vote. And uh, so we, we will be going to that. I think we have 54 members. We have to have a quorum of 27 in order to have a meeting. So we don't want anybody leaving. We we'll to make sure that we have our quorum so that we can uh, carry on with the meeting. So please try to stay behind if you possibly can. Some people say, well, I got to do this, I got to do that. Hey, we do this once a year, once a year. And if you say you're going to be a member, we want you to try to be here to support uh, this. This is so very important. If you're not members of the church, by that I mean you fill out a card, you uh, commit yourself to be a member of the church, you're still welcome and you have a voice. You can stand up and talk. You can even holler at me or whatever you want to do. And if it gets too out of hand, we have uh, uh, Terry Clay back there to usher you out. Uh, all he usually has to do is look at you. He's really as gentle as a lamb and he's so big and scares people to death. You ought to see him on the school bus, man. He just looks at those kids and they sit down. So that's coming and that'll be today and we usually have wonderful meetings and uh, of course we're coming to the end of a 21 day fast. It's been a glorious fast and we'll be sharing a little bit more on that in just a little bit. Men's breakfast, um, that's going to be the next Saturday, not this coming Saturday at Frank's at 8 o'clock. We're not going to have work afterwards, it's supposed to be kind of cooked, chilly and cold. But we want us just to get together, as many guys that can possibly be there, just to have breakfast, to fellowship, and spend some time just sharing. And uh, I think it'll be a wonderful time. So guys, please, the women have their meeting, they had 19 here. I would love to have 19 guys at our breakfast. And so uh, we can't even we can't even bribe the guys with meals, you know. So we hope we'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> so you come and find out. But uh, we we want the men all to be there. And usually everybody takes care of their own breakfast. Though I've had them buy mine before, and I bought some for some guys. So it just depends on how the Lord moves. Also, then on the. Uh, 18th of February, we have the Millican Trio coming for a Sunday night service. Usually have our life groups. We'll be having a Sunday night service with the Millicans and their trio. It's wonderful singing. You'll really enjoy that. Wonderful ministry. So please be there. And then Sisterhood. Sheila's got some things for us for Sisterhood. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Forgive the voice. I'm still trying to get over this, you know, whatever I have. Um, okay, so Sisterhood, we are starting Bible study. Um, we are doing it every other week for its seven sessions. So that starts on the 10th of February, which is Saturday at 10 a.m. And then there will be a second one, um, the same session, at Sister Brenda's house on Monday night, the 12th, at 6.30. So you can pick and choose whichever one you can make that week. Um, so Monday the 10th will be the first session, and then the first session will also be done at Brenda's house on Monday night. So you can, you know, whatever accommodates you. Also, don't forget, Brenda had the prayer meeting this last Tuesday morning. Um, and that will be held again in two weeks, which will be the 6th of February at 10 a.m. here at the church. Also for the, the Bible study, if um, anyone needs a book, let me know. Come see me. They are $13. Um, but see me anyway if you want to be a part of this Bible study. I think it's going to be um, really good for the women. And uh, I'm kind of excited to get to know everybody like this. So um, if you um, want to be a part of it, come see me, let me know, and we will get the books um, taken care of for you, okay? Thanks. bless our service this morning in a special way. Anointing the singing, anointing the ministry, and anointing the day with His presence, and that we would just see and sense the glory of the Lord filling this place. Uh, not only today, I don't know about you, but I've had the greatest 21 days. It's been great. And uh, just felt the presence of God. I don't believe there's a day gone by that I've not felt a special presence of the Lord and 
has touched our life and our family and our home. We've had some wonderful prayers answered this month. God doing some wonderful things. And uh, uh, I'm going to be ministering today on the rewards of those that fast. And I'm telling you, there's some rewards that God has for his people. When they take time and set that time apart for the Lord. And uh, I, I love these 21 days. How many of you have enjoyed that? Just that special time. I know different ones have fasted in different ways. And you do it as God needs you. But I've heard some good reports back. And lives touched and encouraged by all of that. And uh, let's just pray that the same spirit will take us right on through the rest of the year for the glory of God. Brother Terry. I've got a message from Ron Presley this yes. morning. And he's not able to go to church because of his lung condition from the accident. And he's asking for special prayer. Okay, let's pray for Ron. Um, appreciate that. In fact, I just talked to Susie. We want to do something financially for them uh, in the bread basket to a dear friend of ours and uh, almost got killed in a car accident. Wonderful man of God, pastor, and, and uh, we've known a good friend of Terry and I. And, uh, so uh, uh, we're personally going to do some things for them, but also uh, look at the church uh, is going to do something to help them. Also, uh, I want to pray for um, uh, Jessica about to me. Her, a need. her cousin lives right next to her. It was her husband that got killed that hit that pontoon uh, police officer in his car head on right here on uh, one, uh, one, uh, one Route 3. It was 111? Yeah. Route 11. And uh, got, he got killed, burned up in the car. That was her uh, cousin's husband. And uh, just a tragedy for that family. And uh, uh, they have a GoFundMe page. On Facebook, you can see Jessica a little bit about that. But very poor family, tragic. They have five kids, just a bad situation, and uh, they need prayers and they need help. Uh, <coughs> it's, it's just so pitiful the things that happen. Yeah. yeah, the police officer. Yeah, the police officer. He's actually doing good. He's doing good. He's got he's got broken bones in his face. He's got a little swelling around it, but they took him off the ventilator. And he had surgery on his leg that got broken. So he's actually coming out. He actually came out of it. Good. Uh, I've not been following a lot of the news, but uh, um, it's, that these are tragic things that have happened. And then also, Darlene, one of, one of her close friends, uh, her daughter has been missing, uh, forget her name, Andrea, or something like that. Andrea is missing, been missing for some days now. And uh, they're looking at you know, what's happened there. These are tragic things, you know. And sometimes when it doesn't happen to you, and you see it, you feel sorry, and you go in line, and then you found out it's related to somebody in the church, it's your next door neighbor. You know, I was looking more at the pontoon cop, you know, wondering who he was, and I didn't recognize him. And, uh, uh, just, uh, just sad stories. And they need our prayers. Amen. Amen. And uh, I hope if I'm ever in a tragic accident, you'll be praying for me. So let's lift up these knees. Let's just stand. Let's begin to search James. I can use some prayer. I've got an uh, interview coming up to be promoted to supervisor on my job. Sure. Wonderful. Good. Let's believe God for that. Well, I can do that. Yes, Marie. Can you remember the way I just not going to say really struggling. There's some issues going on in life that's really weakened her. And uh, needs very close to the right. Lord, we lift up our hands to you, Lord, in submission to your will. Because we know that, Lord, all things work according to your will, your purpose, your plan, that you're sovereign, you're God. Lord, we know as the creator of this, you're also the caretaker. And God, you said for us to cast our care upon you because you care for us. Lord, we know you have the power. You can do all things, Lord. There's nothing too great nor too small. The Lord, you can't reach down and in your omnipotence, Lord, and all your omniscience and all the wonders of who you are can be manifested in the answered prayers of your people. So, Lord, we bring these things to you. We ask for Ron that you would touch him in body. Lord, for this accident, you bring healing and speedy recovery, Lord, and minister to him and his family and their financial needs and the struggles they're having right now, Lord. God, I pray you would lift him up, raise him up in the name of Jesus. 
Raise up Levada, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Heal her, God, of this attack on her body and this weakness. Lord, that she is suffering, God. Lord, I pray to bring healing to her body in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. You are so great, Lord. You see this family that's been bereaved of their dad and five children, his wife, God, and the needs of that family, and even for the funeral and all that they're going to be bombarded with and the tears and the, and the shock of what they're going through, Lord. Cover them with your grace. Draw them to you, Lord. Even let Jessica be a witness and Joshua a witness to them. Lord, of the grace of God and the love of God. Lord, help us as a church to reach out to them. I'll praise you for it, Lord. And I pray, God, that you would be with this one that's been missing it. This Andrea, Lord, for this whole week, God, they're looking for her. We pray, God, that, would be, uh, that she would be found, that all things would work out well for your glory, that, Lord, you would undertake for these urgent needs right now for your glory. Lord, we answer from heaven, God, that you would guide the police and guide the, the family to finding her. We we'll thank you for it. We pray even for James, God, that, Lord, we said we have not because we ask not. We ask, Lord, for this promotion. What your word says, the promotion doesn't come from the, uh, the east, and it doesn't come from the west, and it doesn't come from the south. The promotion comes from the Lord. And God, we know that you sit on high, and the Lord, you're the one that gives promotion. And so promote James according to your will. Work out everything in all of our lives. And God, in every way, help us to praise you and thank you and live for you. Lord, let our lights and our lives shine forth the glory of the Lord. I will praise you for it. I ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen and Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Let's worship the Lord.
from this in my life. It's a blind spot. You all have to forgive me because if it was up to me, we'd go bankrupt around here. If I would forget to take an offering up, that's the worst problem I have. I only know the one other preacher that had the same problem. And he was a great preacher, pastor of a church of 20,000 people, but he said he was terrible at taking up offerings. And uh, I'm sorry, but we're going to take up an offering because I was reminded by our officers we forgot to do that. So, uh, we appreciate your giving. God bless you. And uh, we trust the Lord bless this offering. Father, we thank you for the privilege, the honor of giving to you. Lord, it's a, it's a ministry of worship. God, I pray that you touch all of our hearts today to give as you have given to us. Lord, press down, running over. I mean, you have blessed us, God, beyond what we could even imagine. Our, Lord, our baskets are full. We have received so much from you. God, I pray that you, as you have blessed us, we would also bless your kingdom, bless your plans, bless your purposes. Lord, bless this church. You founded it, Lord. You formed it. God, help us to fulfill that which you desire for Bethel through the giving of your people and the ministries that go on in this church. And so, Lord, each one that gives today, let your hand be upon them. Let us give generously unto the Lord. I'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.
I'm coming for a people without spot and wrinkle. My love <coughs> will draw you and bring you into that place, my children. Position yourself, for this is the day, this is the hour to apply and come into position that I have called you to. This is not a day to play games with me. This is not an hour to run from me. For my love is everlasting. My grace is with you and my mercy. I bring order to the house of God. Arrest yourself and come into the full position that I have called you to. Rise up, my children, and take your place. Do not walk in shame. Do not walk in condemnation any longer. Do not say, I cannot do this, Lord. This is too much. But I say, arise, my children, and come into the army of the Lord that I called you to. This is the day and the hour. My people and those of the world need me. They need me and they are hungry for me. Will you not position yourself and take your rightful place in the army of the Lord. Amen. Come. Come to the beauty of my holiness. Come and take pleasure in my love for you, my children. Come and bask in my presence, says the Lord. For there's a new day, a new time, and a new order for this house. I am rearranging and changing the structure of this place and putting people into position for this last day and this hour. Shake yourself. Take off the bonds and the bondages and lay them aside, says the Lord. Come into the place of my beauty and my rest and my peace, says the Lord. It's like that woman that came and broke the alabaster box. 
Judas railed on her. So that could have been given to the poor instead of wasting it. You're wasting it. On Jesus? God, give us more bearings. Give us more Joshua's. Give us more people that would love Jesus so much that no matter what he asks you to do, you just fall on your knees and say, here I am, Lord. Do you speak? I don't know all that God has in store for us this new year. All I know is I'm set for it. I'm ready for it. And I'm going into this new year with an excitement of what God is going to do in our midst for his glory. And uh, I just want to be a part of it. Amen? Amen. I want to be a part of it. Praise God. Well, I'm finishing up my series on fasting and uh, didn't even go in all the directions I wanted to go in. And that doesn't matter. <coughs> but I do know that the Lord has laid these things on my heart. And even the sermon that I'm preaching today, I had the outline that God rearranged the outline completely for me over this last week. And uh, it's been rich. And I thank you. Uh, musicians, they're beautiful. They're wonderful. I love the songs. And... and uh, Sit there fighting back the tears through most of the service, and the victory, and all that God has for us. And I'm so excited with what the Lord is doing um, here at Bethel. And I talked last week, and uh, we've been doing a Daniel's fast all this week. And we've been dealing a series here on the chosen fast in Isaiah chapter 58. And last week I talked about uh, the reasons for fasting. If you could slap that up there for me, uh, appreciate that. And uh, we talked about the five different reasons for the fast. And they were to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, to break every yoke, and to deal our bread to the hungry. And we dealt with all that last week and, and the reasons for fasting. And Isaiah, there's more, but that, that's it in a nutshell, basically, in one verse, showing us the reason. Why we should fast. And believe me, if God asks you to do something, there's always a real good reason behind it. You might not understand it. It might sound stupid to become weak. But God says, if you become weak, then I can become strong and mighty through you. So that the things you do are not in your strength, but in the strength of the Lord. And that's one of the major purposes of fasting is to bring ourselves to a place where God can use us the way he wants to use us. Amen? Amen. And this morning I want to talk real quickly on the rewards. The rewards for those that choose the chosen fast. Amen. And uh, there's rewards, and I love this in Isaiah, where he talks about it in verse 8 and 9. It says this, and you'll see the change, the change in the wording here. It says it's not this uh, to, to, to deal bread to the hungry and that the poor might be cast into all that in verse 7. And then he says this. He starts out with, then. Everyone say then. Amen. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy real reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, here I am. There I see five rewards for those that would choose the fast of the Lord, or that chosen fast. And uh, uh, I call them rewards because Jesus said this in Matthew 6, 17. But thou, when thou fast, fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto the Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And so I thought, wow, what are the rewards of, the, of, of fasting? And then I looked at this verse and said, wow, these are the rewards of those that will fast and seek the Lord. And it's called Daniel's fast. The Lord led my heart to the book of Daniel this weekend. I was seeing in the life of Daniel how that really 
all of the rewards of fasting that are listed here in verses 8 and 9 are seen in the life of Daniel. So I want to take Daniel as my main object as we watch his life as a young man until an old man. And how that Daniel actually lived out the rewards of those who fast and pray. And of all the Old Testament characters, Daniel fasted and sought the Lord more than them all. There were some great men. There was the Nehemiahs and the Josephs and there was uh, other great men down through the Bible. But I'm telling you, Daniel was listed as one of the special ones uh, that fasted and sought the Lord like no others. And Daniel received revelations from God that no other man had ever received and understood the fullness of God's plan better than anybody ever could see. You want to see this in the book of Daniel. Many of the prophecy teachers will take the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation and they squeeze them together as one as God brings his word to pass from the old into the new and lets us know that God's hand designed it all. And I'll prove that today in the book of Daniel through the man that knew the mind of God because he was a man that sought God with all of his heart and God blessed Daniel and taught us through his life the rewards of those that will fast and pray. Those that will seek the, 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 the heart of God, will seek the face of God, will seek God with all their heart. The Bible says they will find Him. So I want to bring these thoughts to you very quickly this morning. So much I can say. My heart is so filled up. But I want you to see this. First of all, it says in verse 8, Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. What it means by that is, this is the first reward of, the, of, the, of those who will fast and pray. Then you see more clearly God's purpose and His plans for your life. You have greater insight, greater understanding, greater wisdom. It will fill your hearts and, and the will of God for you and your family and the ministry and your future I mean, begins to be, be revealed to you, begin to understand this is what happens when you begin to seek the Lord with prayer and fasting. Many don't ever receive it. Many have no clue where they're going in life and they just go around in a circle all their life and go around in a circle because they never get all of God. Right. They're far from Him even though they worship Him with their lips, but their hearts are far. But those that will seek the Lord with fasting and prayer like Daniel did, you'll understand God's plan and purpose for your life. I'll tell you, there's great reward. Daniel had great revelations of truth. God opened his eyes and showed him things that nobody else uh, could ever have seen. And, and uh, there's nobody in the Old Testament that saw these plans and purposes more clearly than Daniel did. And uh, it's just beautiful. And we see it right in the beginning as a, as a, as a, as a, a young man in chapter 2. I'm going to go to chapter 1 later on in the next point here. But chapter 1, 2, uh, he, he's a young man and brought into the kingdom and he's being groomed in, into leadership. And, and you see that in chapter 1. In chapter 2, he's now leading all of a sudden a Nebuchadnezzar, the leader of the Babylonian Empire, where he had become a captive. But now he was in the royal party and, and uh, serving the king as a, one of the wise men and one of the counselors to the kingdom. And, and the, this king, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And when he had the dream, uh, uh, he was confused. In fact, when he woke up the next morning, he couldn't even remember the dream, but it so amazed him. He, he was wondering, what did I dream? What did I, this is unbelievable. But he couldn't remember his dream. And so he called all the musicians and wise men and said, hey, I need someone here, to all of you wise men, to tell me my dream so that you, you can also tell me the interpretation. And they said, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, you, you, this is impossible. Tell us the dream and we'll give you the interpretation. And he says, well, I can't remember the dream, but if you're so wise, tell me the dream and tell me the interpretation. And none of them could. And so he put out a decree and says, tell them all. So they came knocking at Daniel's door. They have his Hebrew friends and they said, hey, this is the decree from the king. He's going to kill every wise man here. So get ready. Your, 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 your number's been laid out there. You're going to die. And David, Daniel said, well, what's this all about? He told him what was going on. He says, hey, let me go see the king. And he went, rushed to the king, risked his life, walked in on the king and said, hey, give me a chance. Read it, sir. He said, just give me a, a one chance here. i got to get a hold of God real quickly. So king, just hold on. And so Daniel ran up to God and his friends and said, Hey guys, we gotta get a hold of God. We gotta get a hold of God now. No eating, no drinking, no pleasure, no fine foods, nothing. Come on, guys, we gotta pray. And they got down, they started seeking God. I'm telling you, in the midnight hour, God gave Daniel a vision, showed him what the dream was, and showed him the interpretation of the dream. And he brought forth the revelation to Nebuchadnezzar, and he told him the most profound thing that was going to happen, how the, the king of Babylon would rise and we have this gold, this, this, this image with a gold head, and then a silver 
then, then he had on the a brass loins around him, and uh, then the feet were of iron, and then later on the iron mixed with clay. And God would reveal to Daniel how that God was going to raise up King Nebuchadnezzar, but his day would come when his kingdom would be turned over to the Medes and the Persians, and then the Medes and Persians would lose it to the Grecians, and the Grecians would lose it to the Romans. And the image is going to be that when they destroyed all the kingdoms of the world, and God was going to set up his kingdom on this earth, which has not even happened yet. But everything else Daniel said was going to happen came to pass as he prophesied hundreds of years in advance what God was going to do. Hallelujah. Amen. By getting a hold of God, fasting and praying, I mean, he was enlightened. He was enlightened. Uh, he, he began to see clearly God's purposes. The Bible says this, Then shall thy light break forth as the morning at that midnight hour. I'm telling you, whammo. The lights went on, and he knew he'd heard from God. And any man will fast and pray. Paul learned this lesson right after he got saved. Remember, he was smitten with blindness on the Damascus Road, and they rushed him off uh, to the street called Straighton. There he was, and Ananias came up there to pray for him. And uh, Paul, while he was fasting, the Bible said, no food, no drink, nothing, put it into his mouth for three days. I mean, this guy had heard from God on that Damascus Road. He's trying to sort it all out. Here he's on his way to destroy the Christians, and all of a sudden God said, no, you're not going to destroy them. I'm going to use you to build my kingdom like you've never seen it built before. I'm going to make you an apostle to the Gentiles. You're going to turn them from darkness to the light and from the bondage of sin into the freedom that's only in me. Your life is about to change, uh, Paul, so you better get a hold of me. So Paul left that road. They escorted him. He's blind into, into Damascus, and there he waited. And God revealed to him, there's a guy coming by the name of Ananias, and you're going to receive your sight. God told Ananias, go there with this guy, did and I said, Paul, he'll kill me. This guy's the most ruthless guy in the world. He said, I said, go. So Ananias said, Peter, Lord, I love these people that fast and pray. And know the mind of God. And he went, laid hands on Paul, you know the rest of the story. And so he, the scales came up his eyes. Paul seen the light broke forth. God told him he began to understand the purposes and plans of God. Called him off into the Arabian Desert for three years. Lifted him up into the heavenly places and began to reveal to him his plans, his purposes. Gave him revelations of the rapture and all the things that were to come in the coming of the Lord until the Lord would come. Wrote all these marvelous books, 14 of them in the New Testament. Began to give us instruction and the wisdom of God that was going to give a foundation to the church to bring us to the place that we are today. I'm telling you, those, those, that will fast and pray will see more clearly the plans and the purposes of God. Like Daniel, like Paul, and like all who will seek God with fasting and prayer. Every major decision I've ever had to make, every great revelation that God gave to me concerning his plans and his purpose for my life came through a time of fasting and praying. Even my wife, I prayed the Lord would open up the doors for me to be able to marry my wife. The school had a law that said you could not marry. You started school, you finished your, 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 your three years there, then you could get married. I said, Lord, I believe I need to marry her now. <laughs> it was my second year, it was in the summer. We had to go back for one more one year, and I knew God had opened the doors for us to go to Africa. And I said, Lord, change the heart of Brother B and allow my wife and I to get married, my girlfriend at that time. I did. My wife knew I was, my girlfriend knew I was praying. I fasted that day. 